I was with my friends and we were taking a road trip to Dallas, Texas, because apparently Texas is where we go to have some fun, right, John? <laughs> and we went into the bars and it was just so peaceful. It was just crazy. Like when you went in, everybody was getting along. There was no drama. And then the bars closed. And we went outside and it was literally like we walked into a whole different environment, much like a war zone. People were literally fighting throughout the streets. There were people rocking the cars, and there was a helicopter that flew by with a light on. It was insane. And it was about that time, a truckload of guys drove up right next to me and my buddies and said, get them! Of course I did what any guy 6'3", 260 would do. I ran. I didn't know where I was going, but I ran as fast as I possibly could until luckily I made it back to our car. I looked to my friends, I was like, that was scary, right? They're like, we don't even know why you're running, but we figured if you were scared, we'd better be scared. <laughs> Stories are so powerful. Stories can change the world. Even on smaller things, hey, you know my thoughts on it? Let me think about it for a second. If you do have to come, because we know that sometimes business happens, right? We don't have time to plant that seed ahead of time. Let me know what you want me to answer, and then be comfortable with the silence. Because what I see all the time when extroverts come to the meetings with introverts is, they ask a question, maybe to a group, maybe not thinking about it from an introverted perspective. They ask a question, there's a little bit of silence. <laughs> all right, well, nobody else is going to speak up. I guess I'll say it again. Or I guess nobody else is talking. I'm going to talk. So just be very comfortable with the silence. Say, hey, take all the time you want to think through this. And let me know if this isn't important to you. We can go ahead and not, we don't have to discuss it. So giving them those cards. Anything you'd add to that? No small talk. No small talk. No. How many uh, introverts over here, how many of you hate icebreakers? Isn't that interesting? You love the icebreakers. You might be lying to you. So it's, and, it's, and the thing is that not everybody hates icebreakers. But what you hear a lot of times from introverts is, listen, I want to get in, I want to get out. I do not need you to suck, suck up my energy right now. <laughs> and if we're going to spend 10 or 15 minutes on an icebreaker, listen, what would I bring in a desert island? I don't know. A toast. <laughs> So this is Autism Awareness Month, and that's why I'm here with you here today. Because this month really helps to spur awareness for autism. It's so important. So I did not do that early on. You didn't, but it was okay. It was yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so also, but when you got there, you tied it to something you were clearly passionate about. Yeah. I mean, that's not only did you start to do that, but you also. I could see your passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see where it was all coming from. So well, and I remember getting to it, right? Yeah. I'm just like yeah. excited myself. <laughs> yeah. But the more you can link to those things that you are knowledgeable, that you're passionate about, those are going to come through. How does that relate to your speaking? It's this. And Carly has autism as well. I mean, she would be what would be called a severe um, autism. She struggles, like you see from typical autism, uh, where she she screams out or she self stimulates. She, she, she pulls on her skin, she throws her body down to the ground and hits her head over and over and over again. And what makes it even more severe is, Carly is completely nonverbal. She can't speak to us, she can't share with us what's going on, what she needs, what her struggles are. But the difficulty here is that she has seen specialists and doctors and, and, and psychologists to try to help her move forward, but with autism, oof, it's a tough one. Being a father with a son with autism, there are things that work and there are things that don't, and a lot of times they don't. And she was, her parents were urged to go ahead and just feel good about what they've done for her and allow her to go to a group home where somebody else would take care of her and they could come and visit her. And I'm not telling you that that's always the wrong decision to make as a parent. Absolutely it's not. There's some great decisions within that. Praise God, that wasn't the decision that this father made. He said, this is my daughter. How could I turn my back on my daughter? And in a twist of fate, and miraculously, and without any 
kind of understanding of how she did this, she found herself in front of a laptop and letter by letter by letter started to share her story. Nobody taught her how to type. Nobody even thought that this was a possibility. The first thing she typed was hurt. The second thing she typed was help. She began to type her story out. She said to everyone that was watching, I have autism, but that doesn't define me. Get to know me before you judge me. The first one, suspending judgment. Suspending judgment is used in improv because improv is a very unique space in that anybody who becomes an improv actor or goes on stage, they become a genius. Anything that they say becomes fact. You can't deny it. it is absolutely factual. Now that's a gift and a curse because sometimes people say some pretty crazy things, but you've got to go with it, right? So an example of what that might look like on stage is maybe somebody will come up and say, hey, I'm an astronaut. I'm going to respond back by saying yes, and the rocket leaves in 10 minutes, right? I could deny that. I could be like, ah, you're not an astronaut, and that's not an astronaut's helmet, that's a motorcycle helmet. But what that's, what's that gonna do? It's gonna kill all the potential that scene has. It's gonna kill any creative possibility that's out there. Now let's talk about life. Now I need a show of hands right now. Who in here has ever had an idea and somebody judged it? Okay? I'm gonna ask you a harder question right now. Who in here has ever given up on an idea based off of somebody else's judgment? Another show of hands. Everyone in here. I mean, look at all of those ideas and possibilities that the world is missing out on because of somebody else's judgment. All right, all right. Hey, you guys having a good time? Sweet! Okay, now we've got a scene here called Laugh and Go for you. So for Laugh and Go, our actors are going to come back out here, and we're going to show you that we also have the ability to be serious actors. And that's Let's exactly see. what we're going to try Let's to do see. here. So what is something, uh, some advice that you'd like to pass on to somebody in your family someday? Get, get a job! All right, so we're going to do a scene somehow involving getting a job from our oldest audience uh, member here today here. So getting a job is our suggestion. Now our actors are going to come out here, like I said, and we're going to be doing a scene much like we've done throughout the evening. Now, if we should happen to make you laugh or we make each other laugh, we're going to tap out that actor, replace them so that we can keep the integrity of the scene and keep it on that serious note. Getting a job, begin. <laughs> yeah, I did follow you to the parking lot. I understand there was something wrong with the, uh, the, the toaster, huh? Oh yeah, it was uh, you know, dark black. Uh huh. So, so I don't why you couldn't have come back and tell me that. Yeah, I think it would be inappropriate for me to head to the kitchen of the local village and establish. Uh, no, 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 sir. I don't know that we need to settle this right now. We're gonna go to the Sunshine Cafe. No, and you're not. Lunch. No, you're not, because this is one of my favorite customers who come in. She comes in without you all the time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. She comes in. Yeah, the, you know. And when she comes in, you know what she says about you? She says, I want my mommy. <laughs> you have a, an elderly woman yelling for her own mom because she got her so scared about this kind of stuff. Hi, this is Joe Williams. I just got done watching Matt speak, and I gotta tell you, the guy is unbelievably talented, and he also cares. You know, the world of improv is normally filled with actors uh, and people who are just playing a part. Matt is much more than that. He's worked with our company for many years. I personally hire him and he's a friend of ours. And I want to tell you, he is an amazing, amazing guy. And I'm saying some nice things about him, not only because I like him, but because he deserves it. He's a man of, as I said, incredible skill and talent in taking those, the world of, of improvisation and bringing it into businesses and leadership and to executive teams and, and really enhancing people's businesses through it. But again, more importantly, he has heart, he has soul, and he really cares. And bringing those two things together in today's world is a rare combination. He brings the unique skill set to any business. He's a great speaker and an amazing man. If you get a chance to work with him, seize it. You'll be glad you did.